Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a quick introduction for those who got a free ticket and probably didn't do their research. Uh, so my name is Charlie Kwai. Uh, some of you might have been expecting an, an Asian man or maybe a sad, depressed looking middle-aged gentleman, but in fact, uh, and more unique than that, is I am actually from Bethnal Green, so grew up around this area, which makes me a real East Ender. Is any any more out there? Thought not. Um, so I'm known for taking very close and can candid street portraits, uh, predominantly on the streets of London, but in DHL's case, that was in Margate. Uh, my days consist of walking around in circles, uh, hours on end, in search of interesting people doing obscurely bizarre things. Uh, and that makes me a street photographer. Um, but I like to call it some kind of like freestyle documentary photography. Um, so now I believe in getting your money's worth. So when I heard that you all paid £12 to be here to listen to me, Tonight, I thought I'd better make it worth your money. So, what I'm going to do is take you all into the future and show you a project from Ghana, uh, ruin the surprise, uh, that won't be served for quite a while yet. Um, yeah, so before Christmas, I was in Ghana, which is in West Africa, for those who don't know their geography. Um, but no, I wasn't on my own. I was with a lovely guy called Chris Lee, who's on the left, and Paul Story here. And together, we make up a collective called Tripod City. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tripod City was a band that we decided to form in Rome uh, 10 years ago. Um, uh, but <laughs> with any good band, you need a good band shot. So we spent the entire time in Rome uh, making band shots. Uh, but after realizing none of us could play any instrument, uh, we decided to give up on the uh, music careers and focus on photography instead. So, uh, nine years later, uh, last summer, uh, we released our first book uh, titled Made in China. I've only bought four copies, so they're off for sale. Um, so the idea of the collaboration between the three of us is that we tell stories of place in, places and events uh, from the three perspectives of our styles. And so we try and collectively form uh, one story. So why Ghana, I hear you all thinking. Well, as with China, Ghana was a place that we didn't really know much about. And what we did know uh, was pretty much based on stereotypes or from what we learned from the media. So photography for, for us really is just an excuse to go and visit these places uh, and investigate the reality. Now, before anyone thinks that our trip to Ghana uh, was easy, let me tell you, it definitely wasn't. Firstly, uh, the heat was unbearable. Uh, 40 degrees, uh, walking around in that was suicide. Uh, which made our window of opportunity extremely small. Uh, for comparison, if we were traipsing around in London taking pictures, uh, we'd spend between six and, hour, and, eight, and eight hours walking around. But in Ghana, we literally had two hours or would die. Uh, secondly, uh, we stuck out lo like sore thumbs. Uh, and for some reason, we, came, be we became the center of attention wherever we went, and the kids just wouldn't leave us alone. Uh, so that made it really hard uh, to get those unaware, candid portraits without someone throwing up a gang sign or pulling off some cheesy-ass smile. It was just impossible to get what I wanted. Um, even the kids was in on it. Uh, but obviously, you just got to get involved sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but we really, we don't really help ourselves by wearing matching photography vests and using walkie-talkies. Uh, but the biggest problem that we had in Ghana uh, was that photography was frowned upon by a lot of the population. Uh, and before we went, we honestly thought we could go there and do as we pleased and take pictures how we would in London. But uh, that definitely was not the case. Um, we'll just get heckled for even just having a camera. 
um, let alone taking a picture, and it did like kick off sometimes. And these two are near misses. They are swiping at me with their right hand. Um, but then there was this guy. Uh, I was in the sea taking pictures, and then I found this lovely gentleman standing in the sea looking lost. So I took his picture, naturally, uh, but he uh, kicked off, went crazy, shouting at me in his native language. I didn't know what was going on. But thankfully enough, to my left, there was a family, and the father of the family was wearing a Superman T-shirt, and he came to my rescue, uh, not by calming the situation, but by beating him up. Yeah. And the story ends with us being assigned our personal, cute little bodyguard. Uh, well, it went by the name of Patrick, bottom left for those can't see. Uh, so I think um, I can safely say that our trip to Ghana uh, wasn't uh, very easy and it was challenging to say the least, but um, in hindsight it was a good thing. Uh, we didn't really have time to be intimidated by what we were confronted with, which forced us to find ways uh, to navigate the culture and find ways to shoot how we wanted to shoot. This is the first picture, serious picture I'm showing you, by the way. Uh, another way I tackled the situation uh, was to look for certain things that wouldn't get me into as much trouble. Uh, and these things became their own stories that run alongside uh, the Tripod City collaboration. Uh, this one is obviously of merchandise, uh, which I found entertaining. Um, another one of those uh, series was children or kids. And the thing with street photography is that you always need like an objective or something to constantly look for. Um, it gives you a reason to be there in the first place and carry on walking around the next corner. Um, and believe you me, I've walked um, for hours in circles, days, not knowing why I was there or what I was taking pictures of. Um, so to have something to look for, even if it is kids, uh, anything in between that becomes a bonus. Um, another thing that we documented together actually uh, was various sports. Uh, this one's obviously from a rugby game. Uh, and photographing sports was um, offered some much needed like respite from the drama of the street. And it was an environment of which we could go in and just work freely, uh, but yeah, without the stresses. Um, so I'd love to show you uh, more of these boys, but um, unfortunately we've only got 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to show you one series, and that is a series on trotros. Uh, so, or, or buses to me and you, by the way. Um, and trotros are the public transport system of Ghana, and I believe the wider West African community. And they are absolutely everywhere. Uh, so no matter where you go in Ghana, there'll always be a trotro, which made it an easiest thing for me to constantly do ma no matter where we were. So these guys hanging out the windows are called the mates or bus conductors. Um, and they hang out at the side of transit vans, come buses, um, shouting the destination of which they're heading. And the best thing was by the time they realized I actually took their photograph, they were halfway down the road. Um, so I could get away with quite a bit. Uh, so I began to photograph uh, these lads pretty much from the first day we arrived in Ghana. Um, and the more I did it, uh, the more I realized that they actually loved it. And a lot of them just turned into that, which was a problem. Uh, any graphic designers in the house? Come on. <laughs> it's one for you. Uh, yeah, so alongside photographing the Trotro boys, um, I also photographed their signs, which they stuck on the back of the Trotros, uh, which were obviously pretty entertaining and very obscure. Um, so I did it mainly because they didn't actually talk back. Um, but yeah, they were entertaining. But the main uh, reason why was as soon as you pair them with a Trotro mate, uh, it, be it becomes a kind of uh, running commentary, um, which reflects the sense of humor of these lads that work in the Trotros. Um, yeah, so this will eventually be put into a series uh, in some time in the future. Uh, CharlieQuietGmail.com if you want to pre-order. Uh, so in between the s those little stories uh, was the main reason why we were there. So the assignment of Tripod City. Um, my personal goal within the framework of, of that collaboration was uh, to capture normality. Uh, and I know that doesn't sound very glamorous, but... 
Um, I wanted to capture what was most humanly familiar to me, uh, which I could connect with the most. Um, so I focused on trying to capture uh, the universal uh, connections that we all share as human beings um, to try and evoke like a relationship between uh, the audience, which are all you, and the people in the photographs, which are the Ghanaians. And if there is a connection that exists between you and them, uh, then that could have a real influence over your opinion of um, the person or the place that they're from. Um, and like my style, uh, I get quite close, and that's on purpose, uh, because I want to force you all to use your um, imagination and create your own interpretation uh, of the environment that surround them, or circumstances that might have surrounded this event or person in the photograph. Uh, so if you if you do go to Ghana, uh, or if you've been lucky enough to be, and you know that the Ghanaians are probably the most uh, friendliest, welcoming, and carefree people on the entire planet. Um, so with all what I've said, uh, my my hope is that my photographs go some way by giving voice uh, to their positive and fun-loving attitude towards life. Now, uh, before I go, uh, there might be a few of you in the audience that are wondering what I gave back to the Ghanaians for taking so much. Uh, well, the short answer is haircuts. Thank you. I'm London.Journal on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>